Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now it actually occurred to me the other day that I've not shown you how to set up an HDRI image inside of Blender Octane or set up a world environment. It's very easy to do. In fact, I'll just show you the node set up here. Uh, so pause the video, like the video, steal the nodes, I'll see you later. But essentially what you do have is a transformation node that goes into a spherical projection it goes into your HDRI image, this goes into a texture environment and this then connects to the world output. So let me just quietly take some of this off and we'll just talk our way through it to be honest. Now when you go to File, New and Octane Default Setup it actually gives you a pretty good starting point. It gives you two options, you have the world daylight environment and you have the textured environment. Now in textured environment is essentially your HDRI image or maybe you want to have a coloured background. But I'm going to set everything up uh, just to give you a quick working example. When it comes to daylight environment, you can change things like the latitude and longitude, stuff like this. You can even change the month of the year, it's pretty cool. And there is a few different options if you actually go to Octa environment. You have daylight, you have planetary, so maybe you want to do some sort of some sort of space scene, that's where planetary pretty much comes in. You have texture environment, that's your HDRI, that's your colours, stuff like this. And you have the environment switch, and I made a tutorial on this, uh, I'll put the link in the top right for you. But anyway, let's quickly just start from the beginning. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to drop down a texture environment node. And I'm going to connect this to the environment. Now that's pretty much what it's like cycles. It's fairly similar to be honest and I have an HDRI that I downloaded from my HDRI Haven I'm just going to quickly drag this into the viewport there we go don't need to import it or anything uh, leave most of the defaults pretty much the same um, when it comes to importing generally I leave that automatic that detects whether it's a 32 or 16 bit float image but anyway we plug this into the texture and that's us our setup we've got an HDRI it's now lighting the scene now you might have noticed from the example earlier on that I actually had a little bit more control when it came to the HDRI image. So a lot of people ask, well, how can I rotate it? So you're probably thinking, well, we've got a UV transform here. What if we hit the plus sign? Cool. It gives us a 3D transform node. Uh, let's wiggle it about. Uh, nothing happens. What is going on here? And you might even go to translation. And what happens when you do translation is you don't have enough control and it actually stretches the image. So it's not good. So what we need to do is we actually need to pipe into the projection. Now we're using a spherical projection because we're using an HDRI image. It goes all around. So what we can do is we can go to add search. We can look for spherical projection. And we can plug this into the projection here. And we'll just use the 3D transformation node that we set up. And we can put this into transform. And now when I go to rotate, I have way more control over the HDRI image. And that's pretty much how you set this up. Let me just give you a bit of space here. Very easy to set up. Couple of clicks. What I suggest you do is you actually save this as an asset. And it means it's always set up. And you just drag and drop it anytime you need it. Uh, but let's say for example you want to light the scene. But you want to have a different coloured background. You perhaps want a black background. You're doing a product shot for example. So you can see that we have the visible environment. Environments what's working, visible environments is basically what you want to see. So if I hit the plus sign here, it'll give me a texture environment. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this black so we definitely know. And you're thinking, why is this not working? The reason for this is we haven't enabled it in the backplate. So we want to use this in the backplate. And as soon as I enable it, everything's working perfect. We have the HDRI image light in the scene and we now have a black background. Now just to quickly go over some of the options. Reflections, if you want to steal the reflections, best way to describe it, you can enable it here and they'll essentially be black so it's kind of pointless. Uh, same with refractions, uh, maybe you're doing something in glass and you don't necessarily want either one of these to actually cast these onto the object. But that's for another day. So you can enable this and that's pretty much it. Now, just as an additional, just to kind of help you out, uh, if you actually go to the world properties here on the right-hand side, you can actually see all these nodes set up. So if you go to environment, you can see that I'm actually using a texture environment, and we can quickly change this out as well. Notice how it changes out. So you can quickly move things about. Uh, just be careful when you change things. Uh, if you've got like an RGB, it'll disconnect. 
Uh, so just be very careful with that. And you have everything uh, available to you here that is available in the nodes. Now, generally, personally, myself, I don't use this. I just use nodes. It's a little bit more visual and it's a bit easier for me to understand. Completely up to you at the end of the day. But like I said, you can create assets. Uh, if you want, you can right click on this. Mark as an asset and that's you've got an HDRI set up forever. And that's pretty much how to set up an HDRI image. Uh, any questions? Leave a like, all that jazz. Take care.